Liberalism is a useful and beautiful lie. Pretty intense statement. True, but follow me. Among the list of collective triumphs that have been achieved in the last few decades, the establishment of liberal democracy most certainly ranks among the highest. Respect for individual freedoms, universal suffrage, minority rights, strong welfare systems. I mean, the menu undoubtedly makes your political mouthwater. Political philosophies more broadly can become so massively subscribed to that its adherents fail to notice certain suppositions that are, well, categorically false and make their whole ideological structure fall apart. How, you might ask? Well, I invite you to hop on my train of thought. You see, political ideologies start off determining how the world is, a set of facts about the world from which we can draw conclusions. For Marxists, for instance, this is a war between economic classes. For conservatives, it's a world populated by deeply flawed human beings in need of tradition and religious moral instruction. After determining how the world is, ideologies prescribe a set of actions to be taken to bring about change and transform the existing situation into a more desirable one. To continue with the previous examples, for Marxists, this entails the abolition of classes, the achievement of economic equality. And for conservatives, a world with tightly knit communities subscribing to long-held traditions and principles. In summary, there is a description of how the world is and a subsequent plan to change the world to how you conceive it ought to be. You can be wrong on either of these, or both, and liberalism is wrong on the first one. Liberalism is fundamentally flawed in its supposedly factual description of how the world is. First off, let's consider the roots of the word individual. It comes from the Latin words in devices, meaning not divisible. An individual, in other words, is a unitary, unchanging, holistic entity. When we view ourselves through a biological lens, it is more than clear that we are far from being individuals. The average human body is composed of 37.2 trillion cells, which are dying and being born in a recurring cycle. Your lungs will not enjoy the same oxygen molecules they do now in their next breath. Even your thoughts, personality, and mental dispositions are not the same they were five years ago or ten years ago. We are not indivisible, immutable entities, but rather aggregations of tiny components repeatedly undergoing the same processes. As Heraclitus once said, no man ever steps into the same river twice. Having considered this, it is more than clear that liberalism embeds in its ideological system agents that do not really exist namely individuals who are ascribed rights, duties, and protections. There is, unfortunately, no such thing. The second way in which liberalism inaccurately describes the world is by assuming that there is such a thing as freedoms. You have the freedom to vote, to speak, and an overall plethora of different liberties. The freedom of individuals is put on a pedestal, and the exercise of their volition protected tooth and nail. But where is this free will people talk about so much? We live in a deterministic physical universe composed of particles, atoms, and molecules, which are bound to behave as they do. You might think you decided to watch Star Wars over Spider-Man the other night, or chosen pizza over pasta, but the truth of the matter is that as a purely physical being, you could not have chosen to do otherwise. The hormones, neurotransmitters, and chemicals that inhabit your body, along with your genes and environment, made it so that there was no possible way that you could have taken a different decision. You are inexorably tied to the physical happenings in your brain and body. If I go ahead and artificially reduce the dopamine levels in your brain, for instance, it's safe to say you'll have a pretty hard time experiencing happiness and satisfaction. If you were really untied from the physical world, why would this anatomical change make any difference? Likewise, if I impair the speech-related areas in your brain, your supposed will would be no more able to overcome its impediments to speak than a fish would be able to live out of water. You would be helplessly inarticulate. There is no room for this imaginary, highly venerated will. Based on this, we reach the conclusion that despite all of its utility, liberalism's political prescriptions stand on faulty metaphysical assumptions. There is, in the most literal sense, no individuals and no freedom. This is, of course, not to say that we shouldn't act as if we have free will and as if we are individuals. The point is not to convince you to not be a liberal, but to recognize that its consequential utility notwithstanding, liberalism is existentially unsound. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.